So you join me now and I'm going to start looking at doing some pitching shots. So we discussed the difference between the chipping shot and the pitching shot before and a pitching shot is generally considered to be something that has a slightly longer swing involved in it, hitting the ball a little bit higher up into the air and flying it a little bit further. It's also going to involve a little bit of wrist break during the swing to get that golf ball to go that little bit further. So there's two main components that we can look at in terms of hitting the correct pitch shot and getting the correct distance on the pitch shot. The first component is what are you going to do differently with your swing to get the right distance on the shot. The second component that we'll look at in a little while is going to be the club selection. So similar to when we talked about the chipping, we want to use a, a, a simple technique fundamentally similar to your main swing but has less power. So when we were chipping, we talked about reducing power, narrowing the stance, gripping down, positioning body weight into the left side, all reduces power. Now we can do a very similar job here with the pitching shot, doing, a, doing the same things, but maybe reducing power on a sliding scale this time. So if you can imagine that a very wide stance is going to hit a certain club full distance, so you might measure your sand wedge and your sand wedge might go 80 yards with a full width of stance. As you bring your feet in narrower and narrower, you will reduce the distance that you hit the golf ball. Coming all the way in to, like we talked about before, standing and waiting for a bus narrow. Any narrower than this, you'll start to become off balance. So just comfortably waiting for a bus would be the narrowest stance. Going back out to shoulder width would be the widest stance that we would like you to take. From there, we could also look at the using the grip as a sliding power scale. So taking the club right at the top end like you would do for a full shot gives you full distance. Slide your hands down towards the bottom end until your bottom hand is reaching onto the metal part of the golf club. And that again is a sliding power scale reducing power. So from the widest stance and the fullest grip is full power, narrower and further down, narrower and further down, narrower still and further down to the bottom of the club will reduce the distance that you hit the shot. Now I can't definitely tell you exactly how much that reduces power or how much this reduces power. This is where golf becomes very much about feel and finesse and most of your short game will revolve around feel and finesse for the shot and for the length of your swing. Now the length of the swing is also a huge contributor to again the, the, the length of the shot and the feel and finesse of the shot. So as we bring the feet narrower together and we take the hands lower down the grip, that should also be accompanied by a shorter swing. So if you have a wide stance and a full grip, it should mean that you have a full backswing. And the wider your stance, the bigger your shoulder turn is going to feel like it wants to be as well because you can move your body weight a little bit with that. As we bring the feet narrower and the hands down, your golf swing should shorten up significantly and so should your weight shift. So for most of your pitch shots, unless you feel like you need very close to full power, for most of your pitch shots when you're reducing power, position that body weight into that left side, again similar to the chipping, starting your body weight around about 70% on your left side.